the basic exercises I do on a daily basis that pretty much cover the areas that I see most patients for. They involve my neck, my lower back, and my shoulders. If I were to do nothing, I would definitely do these exercises. It is not strengthening, it is more of a stretching. Now, if I were to choose between stretching and strengthening, and I had no choice but, ch but to choose between the two, I would definitely choose stretching. When you stretch a muscle, it allows the muscle fibers to have the ability to uh, elongate and go back to neutral and then even shorten. <clears throat> Without that ability, it's very easy to injure yourself or pull the muscle. So let's just go over at this point over the exercises that have to do with the neck. I always associate my exercises with the routines that I do on a daily basis. I do my neck exercises when I'm in the bathroom. I do my lower back pelvic exercises every time I face a counter. And I do my shoulder exercises every chance I get. You can associate it with something that you do, you do routinely, not necessarily at the office, not necessarily during a work day. So if you associate an exercise, with an activity you do throughout the day, then you're guaranteed to be doing those exercises. So for the neck exercises, it's very simple. I've done a video on just that one specifically. I'm just gonna briefly go over it. I, I basically wanna draw a circle, a half circle on my chest. So your neck needs to go all the way to the side as far as it goes don't push it too far and make sure that your head does not get tilted back as you reach there so you don't want to be going that way it needs to be as straight as possible with, with your neck being as straight as possible with the head turned as far to towards the shoulder as possible then you bring your chin down you draw your circle you go to the very end and when you're at the very end, you bring your neck up. You do the same. If you do it rapidly, you may get dizzy, so do it slowly. Once you loosen things up, now you're gonna go towards the back. So as you're there, then you're gonna tilt your head back, start rotating, until you get to that point and then you go through the front circle so I'm just going to do one full circle this way and then you also want to do it counter so you go one way clockwise and then opposite way counterclockwise why is the neck exercise to this extreme important because your parasympathetic nervous system reside in your neck. The top of your neck is the part of your neck that unfortunately you hardly ever use given that we're behind the computer a lot and uh, your head goes forward. That's the one joint that really gets compromised. So you wanna induce movement there. Without the movement, uh, you set yourself off uh, up for um, arthritic changes. Arthritis has nothing to do with age, has everything to do this is osteoarthritis, by the way, everything to do with wear and tear and lifestyle. So that's the neck exercise. Then when it comes to the lower back exercise, every time I see a counter, so a bathroom counter, kitchen counter at the office, when it's a, um, if you go to a printer or you're standing against a desk, anything that's horizontal, I've done this exercise, when you're standing up and you rock or you tilt your pelvis up as if you're you're tilting it this way so if this is <clears throat> if this is your spine and this is how you're standing up I'll get closer you want to induce this type of movement so you rock it up and um, that is highly highly important because it allows the joints in the 
back of your spine, the bottom of your spine to open up. It's a movement that happens every time you walk. And believe it or not, I see it in my practice when I do gait analysis, how compromised that is. Why is that important? That's the other end of your parasympathetic nervous system, as well as all the nerves that go to your internal organs like your um, intestine, which plays a huge role with your um, immune system, believe it or not, your bladder, your, your reproductive organs, and um, there is one more, your intestine. I think I already mentioned that. So those are the organs that the nerves coming from your lower back supply um, uh, uh, communication to the brain, et cetera, and to that area and vice versa. So you wanna make sure that communication is intact, not intact, we already know it's intact, but it's in optimal shape. Also, parasympathetic nervous system, a quick review has to do with your, um, um, things like blood pressure, the uh, body functions that you don't have a control over. Um, I've done a video on that very subject. You can search for that <clears throat> and find out. And then finally, when it comes to the shoulder exercises, it's very simple. It's to go behind your back. You go in front of your, not your back, I'm sorry, behind your neck in front of your neck like that. And then you also want to be able to do this. If you can do those ranges of motion um, fully, and when you do it on a daily basis, you will be able to do that. If you do those, then um, um, you've pretty much covered uh, the very basic. Remember the shoulder joint plays a direct role to your upper mid back and your neck, which are highly, highly important your thoracic spine, your mid back has to do with your sympathetic nervous system. Uh, so it's all about prevention. These things have uh, more value than just stretching the muscles. They play a huge role in allowing the communication between your brain to your body parts. Um, um, just looking at the uh, structural component of that communication. Remember, you're the director and the designer of your own life, so design and direct it the way you want. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. I'll make sure I put my email address here. And also, I'm going to post this on Facebook. In case you have any questions, you can certainly Facebook message me. Please do not hesitate to share this with your loved ones, and I will be in touch. You guys take care.